The suspected murder of Sarah Everard and the arrest of a police officer on suspicion of her murder has sent shockwaves through the nation. But the emotional impact on women has been profound. All over the country and beyond, women have been sharing their experiences of being followed home by men, sometimes since they were children, of, of street harassment from, from catcalling or worse, uh, to outright examples of male violence against them and against their relatives, their loved ones, their friends. Now, women are talking about how it's second nature to avoid dark spaces or public spaces, even in daylight, of, uh, of not playing their music too loud on their headphones so they can always hear potentially any dangerous man around them, of always checking in on their friends just to make sure that they're okay. And what they're saying to men, to us, is that we are seen as a potential threat. And they're asking us to understand why. This is a conversation men have to have. The discussion can't be about how women can keep themselves safe, but on how men can be stopped from being a danger. Defensive responses of not all men are as tone deaf as much as they missed the point. In the last recorded year, 1.6 million women suffered domestic violence. One in five women since the age of 16 have suffered some form of sexual assault. 85,000 women or so are raped every year. Every three days, a woman is killed by a man. This is a pandemic of male violence. And this is the conversation men have to have. There is nothing written in the DNA or genes of men to make us potential threats to women. There is a widespread culture amongst men of demeaning women, of objectifying women, of talking about women in degrading ways. This is about how men are educated, about how we're socialized. All men know this. From the earliest age, a certain image of manliness is drummed into our heads that we are expected to show our manliness by getting into fights, casual, needless violence, and never backing down, as well as talking about women in often the most degrading and objectifying and indeed sometimes violent ways possible. At a young age, those boys who don't take part, who don't conform in this sort of behaviour, come under suspicion. Now, homophobia, of course, the worst victims are gay, bi, and queer men. What is not spoken about enough is that many, if not most, straight boys and straight men themselves are on the receiving ends of homophobic language and homophobic slurs. Boys and men who don't engage in behaviour that is degrading to women risk being asked... Are you gay or something? Are you a bender? Are you some sort of puff? Male homophobia is not, above all else, revulsion at same-sex sexual acts between men. Male homophobia acts as the violent border guards of masculinity, abusing, threatening, and violently attacking even those men who fail to conform to a violent, macho image of what it is to be a man with everything associated with what it is to talk about and treat women. There is a reason why in the dramatisation of Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale that gay people are described as gender traitors. Because being gay is seen as the ultimate degrading departure from male norms, a an act of betrayal of what it is to be a man, which is why even many straight men who will protest loudly that they are totally accepting of gay people will feel genuinely affronted and insulted if a stranger misreads them as being gay because they then ask themselves, what unmanly features am I inadvertently displaying to be read in that way?
That culture of women being spoken about in derogatory, in degrading, and indeed outright violent ways amongst men is common amongst working class and middle class men, amongst those men who call themselves progressive as well as conservative. And there are lots of men who hear other men talking about women in degrading ways and think it's wrong, but don't speak out, dismissing it as as banter, or thinking it's not worth the hassle of having an argument over, or fearing that it could escalate even further than that. Throughout our culture, in national newspapers, on our TV screens, in films, on the internet, women are objectified, portrayed as simply existing for the titillation and pleasure of men. Not all men is meaningless, not least because how on earth would women know which men are threats and which are not, but because this culture of degrading and demeaning women is so widespread amongst men that some men think it's essentially integral to what it is to be a man, even though, of course, it is no such thing. Unless men have this conversation and root this culture out, the harassment of and violence against women will go on and on and on. And that's why the discussion has to focus not on how women keep themselves safe from men, but on how men stop themselves from being dangerous to women. And all men, yes, all men, have to encourage and support all of us as we root out this violent and degrading culture. Because until we do, this evil is never going to end.